And now for something completely different. Uh, welcome to Ask an Atheist. We are a live call-in show. We are an educational program dedicated to atheism, skeptical inquiry, and the separation of church and state. I am Mike Gillis, and with me in the co-pilot chair is Libby Mistretta. And I guess the first thing you're wondering is, what, what the hell is this? What, 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 why is there an atheist show on my TV right now? Uh, and, you know, what is an atheist? Uh, let's talk about that really quickly. Uh, well, it's pretty simple, really. An atheist is someone who doesn't believe in gods. Um, we're not devil worshippers. We aren't out there trying to destroy the things that you like or that you hold dear. We're just people who don't believe the way you might if you happen to be a theistic person. Um, we, Mike and I were having a discussion not too long ago about why each one of us is an atheist. And it's basically different for every person. You know, whoever you are, you have your different reasons for coming to your various beliefs. Myself, I was raised in a religious family. I was actually raised in a Mormon family. And uh, as I became a little more mature and grew up and got a little bit more educated, I realized that I didn't find any evidence that supported the existence of gods. And so I just stopped believing. What about you, Mike? Um, honestly, I, I don't think I ever did believe. I don't think that there ever was this, this moment for me that it went away. I just think there was this there's moment where I realized that other people did believe. Um, I was raised in a Catholic backdrop. I, I went to a Catholic school from kindergarten to second grade. Um, we went to mass on holidays, but honestly, my house was incredibly secular. Uh, we didn't, um, I don't know, we didn't go to mass every week. I mean, we would have, uh, my, my mom was really very, actually very liberal, and we would have uh, different implements from different religions up. It wasn't until I was older that I realized that a Christmas tree and a menorah from two different religions. <laughs> Especially odd, because nobody in my family is Jewish. But, well, um, hey. But yeah, the, we, my mom wanted to expose us to everything, but she didn't explain that these are from different religions. Well, so that's kind of cool. Yeah. I didn't really know what any of this stuff was. So um, like, like me, you never had any kind of traumatic or overtly negative experience that pushed you away from religion. It was just a conclusion that you came to. Well, I, I think the thing is, I didn't even realize that I'd made the conclusion. I think that... Um, Religion was just kind of something that people did. It's like when I was in uh, elementary school, uh, before I'd, I'd moved to Kent, um, we had this neighbor who had chickens and a rooster. And every morning the rooster would, would caw. And it wasn't until I got older that I realized, you know, people in suburbs don't have roosters. Um, th this wasn't something that was normal. So it wasn't until I realized that where I was sort of abnormal, I had no frame of reference. So it wasn't until I got to like um, junior high, um, high school, I realized that other people actually believe this stuff, and it was kind of jarring, because I was like, okay, this is just something that I thought people just did. Which is uh, the way people come to, to uh, the conclusion of whether to believe or not is something we're actually going to be talking about today when we get to our topic. But before we do that, I think we should discuss some of these totally awesome news items that Ooh. we found. Excellent. I have a good one. It's pretty cool. Uh, this was actually from just a couple of days ago. There was a, an article in CNN, and the title is are there dangers in being spiritual but not religious? And uh, basically in this article, a Jesuit priest named James Martin uh, claims that when people say, you know, I'm spiritual but I'm not religious, which I think is something that we've all heard, um, they're not just expressing a personal view of the world arrived at by free thought or any other mode of, of thinking, but instead they are actually expressing rampant egotism, which I found a little bit strange and maybe a little offensive. Uh, and there's a quote from this priest in this article that says, religion is hard. Sometimes it's just too much work. People don't like it. I have better things to do with my time. It's just plain old laziness, which I think is a little surprising. It, it, take work, it takes work to believe in the talking snake, I guess. Or just that, um, you know, I'm just going to call myself spiritual but not religious because I don't feel like, I don't know, going to church or whatever. I I just find it weird. I think, I think it needs to be said. Spiritual is a nonsense word. Spiritual doesn't mean anything. Uh, it's a word that people use because they don't like the, the connotations of saying religious because they think, oh, oh, it's only people like you know Pat Robertson and um, and uh, Fred Phelps are religious. I'm spiritual, which is like I'm diet religious. And, and which I, I guess that's a perfectly valid and acceptable uh, definition for the word spiritual. But the problem is, I mean, spiritual. Yeah, like you said, it's just such a blurry word that what does it really mean? It's 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 basically a, a semantic Rorschach test. Basically, it means whatever the person wants it to say. It's like, oh well, I just don't have a structured set of beliefs. It's just kind of a la carte, or it can mean simply that um, I'm I'm just less religious. I'm not as dogmatic. It could just simply mean I believe in myself and this inner truth. Or I mean, it doesn't mean really anything. It's it's a word that doesn't have a lot. 
Um, we're actually going to start taking calls a little later. Um, our phone number is 206-421-5005. And it's up on the screen right on top of my head. Right, right on her there. forehead. So <laughs> I guess that is, is like the mark of the, uh, the beast. Kind of. Hey. <laughs> so, so you had a news article too, right? A yes, good I one. did. Um, the Vatican always, always wanted to reach out and, and touch someone. Um, actually, this comes from the UK Independent. Uh, the Vatican is trying to reach out to atheists, um, but not just any atheists. They don't want uh, famous atheists. They don't want atheists like uh, Richard Dawkins or Christopher Hitchens, who they labeled out. It says the, the Vatican is planning a new initiative to reach out to atheists and agnostics in an attempt to improve the church's relationship with non-believers. And considering they used to burn us, I think just about anything is, is moving upward. Uh, well, that's a big step forward. Uh, basically, they want to have debates with some of the church's top theologians, um, but they don't want to debate some of our top atheists. Um, I guess they, they said that it involves uh, sarcasm and irony. Um, considering this is a guy who returned, referred to... Uh, a child rape scandal is petty gossip. Um, I, I think what it's kind of kind of come down to is is what I heard um, Al Franken once referred to as the uh, the Alan Combs sort of thing that you you want to pick an opponent that you can uh, you can dazzle around and <laughs> humiliate and defeat easily in front of a crowd. They don't want to take on somebody who doesn't first make this concession that they have, that uh, faith is somehow good. They want somebody. Oh, I wish I had your faith. I'm so sad. So basically, they said that. They want to reach out to atheists, but not to like Richard Dawkins and Christopher Hitchens and or, those guys. Or anyone who wants to level real criticism at them. <laughs> I mean, that's, they, they don't want somebody up there who isn't going to be the Washington generals to their Harlem Globetrotters. Oh. They want to dazzle around and do a lot of crazy uh, moves while we sort of stand there looking boring and sad. And that's the key thing, is that you have to make this concession that, oh my god, I wish I had your faith. There actually was a Catholic priest a few weeks before that who made a remark like, oh, we're just playing at atheism. Because if we were really atheists, that the, uh, the, just the, the true emo sadness of it would just weigh us down <laughs> to the point that uh, we would just, you know, go all Jean-Paul Sartre on people and whine about the meaninglessness of life. And if only we had uh, Jesus and we just latch on to him like that monkey with that... Uh, that uh, mother with a cloth on it. It's just the wire it's mom. The wire mom, <clears throat> and it's it's just it's nonsense. All right, I've got another uh, strange and fascinating news article here. Uh, this is from Adelaide Now, which is an Australian paper. Um, uh, cult leader Rocco told disabled woman that cash would save her, um, and basically this article talks about a uh, quote profoundly vulnerable wheelchair bound disabled woman uh, was told she would die a horrible death unless she handed her life savings over to a doomsday cult leader named Rocco Leo. Uh, and in exchange, he would bring her to a mystery island and miraculously help her walk again. That sounds familiar. Is there a TV show that just ended that was, that was like that? Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd imagine the polar bears and the smoke monster probably come into this. But it's, it's funny because it's, it's funny one that somebody would buy that. You sort of have to be, the, the way cults work, but it, it's, it's also, I want to state right off the bat, I think it's hilarious that magical powers like this tend to work on life savings. I think that's like the gasoline you pour into yes, the engine. Yes, give me all your money and I will use my magic to save you. Mm. Yeah, just say if God gave me magic powers. Well, there, there is actually a, a good punchline to this story. Uh, the, the woman who was victimized by this weird cult leader guy is actually suing. Um, the cult leader and senior members of Agape Ministries, Joe and Marie Antoinette Veneziano, according to Adelaide Now in Australia. Um, she's suing for a total of $500,000, which includes the $420,000 she handed over after selling her house, includes lost rental income, costs, and damages. So I think it's pretty cool that she at least was able to, after she unfortunately made the mistake of handing over her money, at least she was able to kind of pull herself back and say, oh, wait a minute, yeah, you know, that's sad, I've been though. duped. Yeah, yeah, I think a lot of times what ends up happening in these cases is that the person who ends up getting taken uh, for all their worth always ends up defending the person that, that ruins their life. And yeah. it's kind of nice that like, she's broken free of that at least. Indeed. Um, what is this? Here's another one. This is kind of, this is from ABC News. Oh, do you have one? No, go for it. Okay.